Sarah, welcome to or welcome back to my channel where I talk about all things books and writing and it's the week before Christmas and I'm trying to get into the holiday spirit. I really wanted to do one of those book advent calendars this year but I thought it was super impractical and expensive because I don't read that many books a month and there's no way I had enough time in December to read a book a day and also that's a lot of money so I decided to make kind of like a 2024 TBR advent calendar or like mystery book calendar and so I went shopping from my own bookshelves for all the books that I bought in 2023 that I have not read or my husband's books and I gathered them all and I'm going to be wrapping them up and kind of making my own mystery book calendar so that I can choose one or two books every month for the next year. So let's get started. I'm so excited to wrap these up and just kind of like talk about all the books I'm excited to read for the new year. The first book on my TBR that I'm wrapping is The Cruel Prince by Holly Black. I have slightly started this book. I'm a little nervous that I won't like this book, but I'm gonna give it an effort. I found it at a thrift store, so it wasn't really like a big purchase for me, but I've heard it's like a bully romance a little bit, which is totally not my thing. Um, I can only handle so much of that, but I've just heard so many people talk about this book for years now, and I just feel like I need to know the hype, you know? Like I need to read it, I need to know it for myself. So that's one of the books on my 2024 TBR, and we'll see how it goes. My next book is Brandon Sanderson's The Way of Kings. One of my goals for 2023 was to read a few male authors because I primarily read female authors and Brandon Sanderson was at the top of my list. My husband has started reading Brandon Sanderson's books and absolutely loves them so I feel like I'm going to like it. I just haven't really gotten there. I did start one of his books this year and liked it but I've heard it's like not very typical of his writing style but this series just looks really long and I just didn't have time for that this year. I didn't have time to start like a whole brand new long series with really dense writing but i'm excited to try this one i've heard nothing but good things about him about his writing about his character development and i've listened to a few of his writing seminars at i think it's at byu and they've been excellent so i'm really excited to see him like put that writing advice to work in these books and just experience his cosmere i believe they call it 
I am so excited about this book. I'm wanting to get into cozy fantasy. I feel like this is a great start. I got this book this year for a book club with my NaNoWriMo group and just never went to the book club. I bought the book. I told them I was coming. I was really excited and I just never went. We like got super busy and I am really bad at like if you have to go somewhere like almost every week. I don't know. I, I don't follow through with that. So I've had this book. I've read maybe the just the prologue of it, but I never finished anything with this book. So I'm looking forward to starting it because I really want to get into cozy fantasy. It seems like such a fun genre that just like combines everything I love about fantasy, but like isn't as heart-wrenching as most fantasies that I read. I'm excited to start it. So this will be my intro into it. And hopefully I read this one soon because I had just started it recently and I kind of want to keep going. If you guys have any cozy fantasy recommendations, please let me know in the comments because I really want to like expand on that genre this year and like read a bunch of them. So tell me all your favorites, please. Next is The Giver by Lois Lowry. I have read other books by Lois Lowry. Remember the Stars was definitely one of my favorites growing up. I absolutely love this movie. I love futuristic kind of like dystopian society books or movies. I cannot get enough of those. So I am really excited to read this one. I've heard this book is way more ambiguous than the ending of The Giver, like the movie. So that'll be really interesting to see. Next up is City of Bones by Cassandra Clare. I have not read anything by Cassandra Clare and I really want to break into her world. I hear such good things. I know The Mortal Instruments is like her oldest series. One is this from maybe like 2007 or something. Somehow I missed like so many books from like when I was in high school, like ones that were really popular. I wish I had read them back then instead of having to like break into these worlds now as an adult because it's just so different. I know you need to read all of the starter books in the Mortal Instruments series to kind of get into the other ones, like the clockwork ones. I don't know. I Obviously I don't know that much about it because I haven't read any of these, but the fact that she's still releasing like new books in this whole universe is just crazy to me after all this time and just like the sheer number of books that are in her series is really insane to me so I'm excited if I like this I'm so excited to just be able to keep going and read like 15 or 20 books that's awesome to me when you like an author and you like their world that they've created and you can just kind of devour like so many books I don't know 15 or 20 books of something you love is just incredible Game of Thrones by George R. Martin. I am not sure how much I'm going to like this, but so many people that love fantasy always talk about this series being like a pinnacle of just incredible story weaving, minor characters, world building, all that kind of stuff. I tried to watch the first couple episodes of the TV show and just found it way too dark for me. I cannot stand when books kill animals and the amount of like wolf dogs that they had in the beginning that were getting killed, it like hurt my heart too much. And then the incest and the murder was just like all so quick that I just could not jump into it. But I've seen like snippets of later on and I'm like, oh, this looks so good. And it looks like so many of these characters have such incredible like story arcs. So I found it at a thrift store for like 50 cents or something. And I'm gonna give the first Game of Thrones book a try. We'll see how that goes. Next up is Aragon by Christopher Paolini, if that's how you say his name. This is my husband's book. It is one of his favorite series. He read it when he was young and just reread it recently and it got him back into reading and I have never read it. I totally missed Aragon, Percy Jackson, a lot of different books that came out when I was young that I feel like were kind of more marketed as like boy adventure books and somehow I just missed all that. So I've been having so much fun rereading some of these series and getting to like relive all the fun childhood like fantasy magic. So I'm excited to try this one out. I'm also just loving the resurgence of dragon books like Fourth Wing and so many others that are coming out lately that are just such fun adventure time. And so I'm excited to read an old school dragon series that was popular many years ago. Let me know in the comments below if you have any other dragon series that were your favorite that I should read next. 
it's totally the next day. Apparently wrapping 18 books is a lot. So this is what I did the first night. I only wrapped like, I don't know, six or seven books and that was like enough for me. I'm starting again today, trying to get this video ready for you guys before Christmas. If you guys need to do some last minute wrapping, you can totally do it with me because look at this huge freaking stack of books that I have left to wrap for my calendar. Just enjoy the Christmassy vibes. This next book is so fun to me. It is called Snow Falling, and it's technically by Jane Gloriana Villanueva. It's the main character of Jane the Virgin series, which my friend got this book for me because we would watch Jane the Virgin together. The main character in that series, if you don't know, is a writer, and throughout the whole series, she's writing this book, this love story. You hear about it for so long, and then she finally gets it published. So this is the book that she publishes. The writers of the TV show basically just like created the actual book book for the viewers and that is just the coolest. It just sounds so wild to have like a whole book be created based on something that your character creates which is, I don't know, this is just wild to me. So I'm so excited to read this book. I It's just a little fun romance. I know my friend is like, how have you not read this book? Tell me what you think. So I'm excited to share that with her. All right, I told you I had a couple Brandon Sanderson novels on my TBR for 2024. This is my next one. It is his Mistborn series. So I hear it's one of his best series that most people love and I'm excited. I, I'm down for this. I need some more fantasy worlds. My favorite author is Sarah J Mass, and I have now read all of her books and I'm eagerly awaiting her next one that comes out in January. So I need to get into some of these other fantasy authors that have just like so many books for me to to just kind of devour and a whole world and universe to kind of get absorbed in because I'm running out of it in some of my favorites that I've been reading and I'm coming to the end of most of their universes. So I'm excited to try this one out. The Rest of the Story by Sarah Dessen. Sarah Dessen is like YA contemporary romance, like sweet romance author. Middle school and high school, she was my absolute favorite author. When I like dreamed of becoming an author, I thought of her. She lived in North Carolina with her family and her dogs and was just like in the mountains writing and her life was like my dream. And it, it totally still is today. But this is one of the newer ones she has published and it's kind of odd now reading books that are set in high school now that I've been out of high school for almost 15 years. I still enjoy supporting authors that I always loved and I'm sure she has a whole young audience now, but it's just so fun to kind of follow along, I feel like, with an author that you've kind of like grown up with and see how they're doing now and how their writing has changed. I absolutely love history and read and watch like historical documentaries and just information and this is one of them. Technically it's called The Time in Between. I have never read the English version of this but I have watched the Spanish series. It was called The Time in Between the Seams and I used it like to keep my Spanish fresh a while ago but this is a historical I think true story from what I understand and basically it's set in the World War II, World War I era starting with like the Spanish Civil War and this girl, it's it's a love story, it's a drama but it's it becomes like kind of like a historical spy story and that's what I'm like most excited for is to just kind of like go in depth with that because the TV series you know can only get so much but I believe this was like the real woman's actual story and she was was a seamstress for Nazi wives in Morocco and became this like incredible spy who like shared all this information basically by just having girl talk with women over dresses and I absolutely loved it so I'm so excited to read this hopefully I get a little bit more even than I did out of the Spanish version because my Spanish is only so good but this English version hopefully just has like so much more information for me to get and I cannot wait. This one my friend also got me and I just have started this one a little bit and just never really finished. So I feel like the beginning of books are the hardest to get into and this one, like since I already know how the story went, I felt like I just wanted to like keep skipping and go beyond the beginning and get to like the good stuff. So if you like historical fiction or historical true stories with spies, um, this is for you. Next up is another historical true story, I believe. It's called The Hiding Place by Corinne 
Ten Boom. And this is another World War II that's like my favorite type of history to read or watch. And I really cannot remember what this book is about. I feel like I got it for Christmas like last year or the year before for my family who knows I love history and this is supposed to be like a very famous story um i know it's like a lot of faith and just a whole thing about her and i don't know if she escapes like the concentration camps or how she survives the concentration camps i am not sure but i'm excited to finally get through this book because some of these books it's like you can read it's heavy you know but it's like life-changing heavy kind of reminds me of night by ellie Wiesel which is definitely, that is a book that like has stuck with me my entire life and just how tragic it was, but also his like journey through faith and family and identity and like coping through a horrible tragedy that happens to you and how you kind of like move on from it. So I just feel like reading books like this about real people is so necessary, even though I absolutely love like fiction and fantasy, um, those aren't real people. So it's, it's really cool to know about actual people and their lived experience in our world instead of you know kind of made up tragedies this one's gonna be a sad one so it's gonna be a hard read to get through I feel like but hopefully one that is just as impactful as some of the others like it that I have read Next is a fun throwback, which I absolutely loved this movie, the first movie in particular of the Divergent series by Veronica Roth, and I have never read it. So I have two of them, I believe. I got them at thrift stores for so cheap and just like couldn't pass it up. So I'm going to read this. I have heard so many wild things about the ending to the series and how it is just absolutely bonkers, but I loved this movie and I'm hoping that the the beginning is just great and I might not finish the series but this should be fun you know next up is an indie author book this was one that I purchased maybe like two years ago um, for my birthday I wanted this book it's from the mouth of sirens by Abigail Hare it was probably like when I was just joining book talk for the first time and realizing that indie books existed and this one just looks so beautiful it's like a little mermaid a dark little mermaid retelling and she just had like incredible advertising and i really wanted to read it so i think i've read like two or three chapters and just haven't continued because it just i don't know i just haven't so i am ready to get back into it this year and finish it and i'm sure she has other books coming out soon so i want to know if i like them or not that's like i feel like the cool thing about indie authors is typically they release books pretty quickly i feel like it's just more it's just easier to release books at a faster rate than traditional publishing so hopefully by now that i've <laughs> waited so long to read this book she has more coming out and if i like her writing i will have a lot more to choose from so i'm excited to read that i love fairy tale retellings i feel like they're so fun because it's something you already love it's just a new twist on it and i'm really excited for that so the serpent in wings of night it's the niaxia series by chris the broadbent i've heard so much about this for such a long time but i was just in barnes and noble and saw her new traditionally released version of this book so i'm so glad i got the indie version to just kind of have that little piece of history of hers it's just so crazy seeing how many authors that were self-published have now had their rights bought out by a traditional publisher and are in barnes and noble as you know one of the big five publishing houses it's just really crazy so i'm excited to get into this series i have tried to read her daughter of no world series and just wasn't in the mood for it i was listening to the audiobook and i got quite a bit into it but it was pretty dark and i think this one sounds more at my alley this like more romanticy vibes rather than like an epic fantasy series and i also love it when things have the games or trials and i know that this series has it it's also the whole like vampire and human kind of like combo i find that really fun when it's like a human combined with immortal magical creatures and the human somehow still beats them or something crazy lots of suspended belief but it's always pretty fun love a good underdog story and i've just heard the romance is great the story is just so people can't put the series down and her second book in the duology is already published on this one so as soon as i finish it if i love it i've got more that i can read and this 
is my, I believe, last Brandon Sanderson book that's on my TBR, Tress of the Emerald Sea. I have heard, like, this isn't the best to start with. I thought this was such a fun, whimsical book. I am pretty far into it. I just haven't quite finished. I am somewhere in the middle, like a hundred and something pages in, maybe. It was such a unique concept and so fun. I've never read a book quite like this, but I hear this is not how the rest of his books are. And also, this is the most beautiful book. Like, look at this um, art and just like the design on the inside of the hardcover. It is beautiful. I believe this was like one of his mystery books where people like crowdsource funded them so he could make these like gorgeous copies and everything. I don't know. That man is wild. He writes so much and it's really inspiring. His life, I've listened to like his writing schedule and he writes like in the middle of the night or something. So strange to me. I could never do his like life pattern, but it seems to be what works for him and his family and that's awesome because he wants to like spend a ton of time with his family and spend a ton of time writing and so he kind of like breaks it up throughout the day. I don't know. That's wild to me, but I'm excited to read this one. I am definitely going through like a pirate kick like wanting to read sea piratey stories i definitely read a couple in 2023 and it's just really fun so this book is very like you're traveling on this crazy dangerous sea i don't know so interesting i've never read anything like it it's just very fun very whimsical i love it so i can't wait to read it and finish it and just read more of his books Next up is From Blood and Ash by Jennifer L. Armentrout. And this is one of those books, kind of like The Cruel Prince by Holly Black, that I just feel like everyone talks about this series. People have lots of mixed opinions. I want to read it and decide for myself how I feel about it. I feel like I've heard that it's obscenely spicy, but who the hell knows? So we'll see how that goes. <laughs> I've heard people just trash this series and then people say it's their absolute favorite. It. So it just feels like one of those reads that are like, who knows, this will be a wild ride. This was gifted to me for a birthday present or something. And so getting books like that sometimes where it's like, I don't know if I would buy it myself, but if someone wants to give it to me, go for it. So we'll see how that one goes. That's a, I don't know how I feel about this read. Next is The Priori of the Orange Tree by Samantha Shannon. And this is like my largest book of the whole entire year. And it kind of intimidates me. It looks huge on my TBR list. And I really don't know that much about it. People say they absolutely love it and love her, but I don't know. <laughs> so I'm like nervous about reading this one, getting into a series and it just being so large, but I, I'm i hoping it's just like incredible world building and a really unique culture and story and that the size of it doesn't matter because it's a page turner. So that's my hope for this book, but I've had it for a while and it's just been sitting on my shelf and it feels so silly not to read a book that size and have it there. So so hopefully that goes well and I really like it. I just wrapped my last book. This took me two days. Wrapping presents takes a while. Anyways, these are all of the books. I have 18. This isn't like the total list of books I plan to read in 2024. I have a couple books that are brand new that are coming out and I won't be receiving them until they're published. And also a few audiobook and ebooks I think that I already have. I have another book that's like brand new and I'm gonna read, but I don't plan to just pick it randomly. So I haven't read Iron Flame yet. My husband and I are reading it together and right now we're finishing Kingdom of Ash and that has been taking up all of our time. <laughs> so Iron Flame is next. And so I didn't wanna put it in this list because I know when we wanna read it. We wanna read it ASAP. So I have the 18 books from my house that I plan to read in 2024. So now all that's left is I need to write numbers on it that will like, correspond to the little sheets of paper that I wrote so I can just like pick one out each month and read a new book. So I always like reading audiobooks and ebooks throughout the year as well. So I didn't go overboard with how many I chose. I only chose 18 because I feel like that's like one to two books a month, depending on the month. And I already know that I have a bunch more. So some, some months I feel like I read like six or seven books and then some months I read zero or one. <laughs> so hopefully this will work out just like one book per month and some are like a lot smaller, a lot larger. So I feel like hopefully that'll be a good mix. But yeah, let's just number these up. Mm -hmm. 